The following is an MSNBC special presentation. America is saying goodbye tonight to a man who spent 30 years doing almost anything to keep us up nights. Johnny Carson, who ruled network comedy as the host of NBC's Tonight Show, died today at the age of 79. His family was by his side when he passed away at his home in Malibu from complications of emphysema. Carson disappeared from the public eye 13 years ago, but all those years can't outweigh all those unforgettable moments when we went to bed still laughing out loud. Here's Josh Mankiewicz with a look at the life of Johnny Carson. For 30 years, one man defined comedy in America. For 30 years, one man was the life of a nightly party. And the whole nation was invited. Here's Johnny! Night in and night out, Johnny Carson was seen more often and by more people than any other performer in the history of television. I diddle diddle. He was urbane, but never slick. I diddle diddle. <laughs> How do you greet your diddle diddle in the morning? <laughs> Witty, but never cruel. This group sounds like you went a little heavier on the nog than you did the egg. <laughs> a walking, talking piece of American art polished to a high gloss. His producer for 22 years said Carson was quite simply the perfect television host. If you had to invent somebody to uh, do the job beautifully, he's the man the Lord invented for it. El Moldo, yes. could you guess his hometown now? I'm working on it. Maybe guess. Carson's talents were God-given. I see Chicago. No, I didn't say you lived there. I said I saw it. <laughs> the Joey Bishop Show. But that didn't stop dozens of imitators from trying and failing to become the next Johnny Carson. Dick Cavett was one of them. So much more skill is involved in what he does, did, um, that people don't realize. God. She went to Lincoln High, and she was voted Miss Lincoln because uh, every guy in school took a shot at her in the balcony. <laughs> what was Carson's secret formula for success? Go get out there, troops, and sell those cookies. Johnny's perpetually smiling lips were always sealed. God, I love cookies. The trouble is when you start to discuss comedy, it becomes awfully dull. Once you try to explain why something's funny, it's not funny. But biographer Ron Smith says Carson invented modern comedy by synthesizing many of the performers who had come before him. He had the warmth of Jack Benny. He had the Oliver Hardy glare into the camera. He had some of Jonathan Winter's weirdness. But he was able to combine this all into one all-American package. Got no credit, got no job, we don't care. Got a bad credit rating, we don't care. Got a prison record, we don't care. Don't expect to pay us, that's when we care. <laughs> All of it was a road map to America's funny bone. You come to fork in the road. But if a joke didn't work, and plenty didn't, or if a guest would stink, and plenty did, Johnny always came out smelling like a rose. No one else ever got so much mileage out of bad material. And she said, deporting Robin Leach. <laughs> His bomb takes, as they're sometimes called, were so funny. Hello, one, two. Attention, Kmart shoppers. He made that an art form. It was really something all his own. But even when he laid an egg, Johnny was always NBC's golden goose. For three decades, no matter what shape the peacock was in, The Tonight Show always paid the bills, in some years earning more than 20% of the network's profits. You know who Gene Kelly is? Fred Astaire? No, I don't. Okay. John Travolta? Mickey Mouse. <laughs> in all, he schmoozed with more than 20,000 guests on 6,500 shows. 
Johnny was as big a star as any who came to sit on his couch. He could hold his own with anyone. This is a little sleeping bird. Isn't that cute? He'd yeah. always get the most out of the not-so-famous. From the very old... Look at this one, Johnny. <laughs> To the very young. I know when your birthday is. You know when my birthday is? Yes. When? October 23rd, 1925. <laughs> Here's Johnny. John William Carson, that is. Born in Iowa, Johnny was raised in Norfolk, Nebraska, a Norman Rockwell slice of middle America. His father was a manager for the local power company. His mother managed the house. As the great Carsoni, young Johnny found himself when he discovered magic in a deck of cards. After a hitch in the Navy during World War II and a degree from the University of Nebraska thanks to the GI Bill, Johnny got in on the ground floor of something called television. My name's Johnny Carson. <laughs> Carson took over The Tonight Show in 1962 and through a turbulent decade as assassinations, Vietnam, and a cultural upheaval rocked the nation. Johnny's easy brand of entertainment was a perfect tonic. Critics sometimes say, well, The Tonight Show is, uh, is light, it's frivolous, it doesn't have any great social impact and so forth, and serious things aren't discussed. But that's not what I'm there for. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with going out and just making people... That's a certain social value in that. He knew the brink of rudeness, and there was never a question he'd cross the line. If Johnny said it, it must be in good taste. Welcome to Frontier Bridge. He never shed that Norman Rockwell image of being just plain folks, even when Johnny, by now a megastar, had his portrait painted by Rockwell himself. You know, I've been depressed lately. Depressed? <laughs> yes! Depressed! Why do you repeat everything? If I can go to Taco Bell for that, why do you... He not only killed his audiences, he killed the competition. But while show after show fell to the Carson mystique, countless careers were made by a guest spot on The Tonight Show. For young comedians like Jerry Seinfeld, the road to success led straight through beautiful downtown Burbank. Oh, good evening, boy, this is so exciting. This yeah, guy was an emperor of the industry, and you were going to perform for the emperor. If you're on The Tonight Show and you do well, you're in show business. It's like, welcome, they stamp your hand and you go in. The difference between before and after The Tonight Show, it's, there's nothing like that around today. To the public, Johnny had it all. The incredible home, fame, success. One of America's richest entertainers. In his last year at The Tonight Show in 1992, he earned $30 million. It would be a nice place to come and feed the squirrels. <laughs> and if I ever have any financial reverses, it would be a nice place to come and eat the squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> But Johnny never really seemed all that comfortable with his fame, or for that matter, with himself. By his own admission, he smoked too much, and at times drank too much. Some said he was cold, certainly never easy. Until, that is, he hit his mark on The Tonight Show stage. Johnny's happiest moments would have been when the audience is applauding, and he, with his extraordinary skill, makes them laugh and laugh. But in private, he knew plenty of heartache. Three failed marriages became the stuff of a dozen punchlines. Do all the girls who share my life tell our someone else's wife? Much harder to deal with was the death of the second of his three sons in a car accident. Helping him through that and the rest of his life was his fourth and final wife, Alexis. 
Unlike many of today's comedians who serve up their neuroses to the audience, 